can't, what, what are you doing? I'm fly, fly fishing. What? Fly, I'm fly fishing. I gotta catch a fly first before I can fly fish and catch some trout. No, that's no, not, that's not how it works. I put, even put on my fly fishing uniform. That's what they do. They do the stuff like this and they catch flies and then they catch fish. Ooh. I might have got a bite. Hang on, folks. I think I got one. Better stick around. <laughs> Hey folks, we're doing something a little different today. You don't normally see me drag one of these out of a creek down there in my country because we don't have none of them. But my good friend Tim up at Silver Dollar City, who is sort of like Grizzly Adams of the wild, just wades out in the creek and with them big old bear-like paws, he just slapped them up there on the bank. They're already gilled and gutted when they hit there. But I do love a baked trout. It's something that we don't get to have, me and Shan down there in our country too much. And they're really a very simple dish that you can put together, but very tasty. And today we're just gonna do two that probably weigh, how much, Tim? Oh, maybe uh, a pound, uh, half? Maybe pound. Okay. This started, we're gonna prep these little rascals. I have melted a whole stick of butter in a 14 inch oven. Why 14? Hey, them fellers would sort of curl up in a 12. I want to make sure they reach all the way. Now, just like if I was doing a roast or something that I was baking, I'd pad that rascal with some onions or something like that. But what we're going to pad him with here, we're going to pad him with some lemon. So I just like to cut some lemon slices. Just give them something to have a cushion to set on so they ain't directly setting in the bottom of that Dutch oven. Just line them in here for them to, for them to set. Usually take about three per trout. You can see, Shan will zoom in there, them trout is cleaned really well. So let's commence with that seasoning process to dress these little trout up before they take a bed there in that Dutch oven. So we're gonna slice that lemon pretty thin cause this is gonna help keep that there cavity open in there and also give a little more flavor. I just like to put about two in there. And what are we seasoning with today? Red River Ranch Original. Now this has got a little lemon pepper in there to it, so it's gonna go really well with these trout today. So many people, when it comes to fish or any other meat, they don't hardly season enough. I like to make sure that it's got plenty, and I like to rub it in where I know it's gonna stay. So we'll go ahead and season him on the, top, the bottom side, which is gonna go against them lemons, and then we'll turn him over, put him in that Dutch oven, and finish the rest of him. Go ahead and put us about two of them lemon slices in there, or wedges, if that wants what you call them, and see how nicely he fits there in that 14 inch oven. But remember, we seasoned the underneath side and the inside. Now we gotta season the top side. Make sure you get him covered pretty well, cause I want him to have some flavor everywhere we're at here. The reason you don't want him setting right there on the bottom of that cast iron is I don't want that butter to go to burning on the bottom of them trout. I like to add a little olive oil in there just to give it a little more flavor and taste. Just drizzle you some in there amongst all of them and the butter too. Y'all ever met that feller Herb? I didn't know a whole lot about Herb till Shan come along and she introduced me to Herb. He was out there in the garden. Now I'm gonna put a little rosemary on these rascals because it gives a very distinct taste, I think, to fish and chicken. So we're gonna lay some in there and just let it sit right up on top of them trout with what we've got left over here, which gets down close to the bottom end of the stem. Just pull them little leaves off, rake them back up here together. I just like to sort of break them up, let them get down in that olive oil and that butter to give us some flavor. Now we is ready to go to the fire. While that is cooking, we'll come back over here and we'll prep the sauce, what's gonna go back on there. Whew, a little honey, lemon, and garlic. Mm, gonna be some good eating. We done put them coals pretty heavy around the bottom and pretty heavy on top. But I did put it on a tall trivet because if you were sitting pretty low to there and even had sort of low coals, that butter has more of a chance to stand and burn. Now normally in the house, you'd probably cook these about 375 for about 10 or 12 minutes. We didn't preheat that oven. We just pre-warmed it where that butter would melt, laid them trout in there. How we're gonna know that trout is done is when you can take a fork and you can poke in there and it's good, white, and flaky just comes up and it won't take it long. Be sure that we're gonna check temperature. If we can hold it there more than five seconds, pretty close to it, it is not doing us any good. 
you need them coals to be hot to actually get this thing to baking. But remember, we're also going to rotate the lid one way, bottom the other, to adjust anything if we have too many coals on one side or the other. We have took us two garlic cloves, about two teaspoons of this rosemary, who is a fine lady she is, kind of herb. Mince it up really well. Oh, and if you ain't got one of these, I suggest you look on the website and get you one. You can't cook without it. We're going to dump it right here in this bowl and finish mixing this concoction up that goes with it, which is about, oh, I would say, maybe two tablespoons of honey, which is close to that much. Just a little bit of olive oil so we can thin that down just a tad. Add just a little acid in there just so it'll mix well. Stir it up. Now, this is going to go on them trout right before they're plumb done, sort of as a glaze. It's going to give it some flavor and some taste. Whew, I could just have that on a bologna sandwich and it'd be good. Well, folks, been on about probably 10 or 12 minutes with this old oven doing its job. Whoa, ain't that a pretty sound. Now, I'm sort of liking that. How do you know when it's time to glaze? I like to take me one of them forks, reach in here about the meatiest part of that trout, pull him up there. See how good and flaky that is? You can see how easy he pulls apart there. That's when I know it's time to glaze these trout. So, remember that concoction we mixed up there a while ago? Woo! We just gonna spoon it right over that trout. We'll take it off the bottom heat and we're just gonna put top heat on it and let that glaze go to work a little. We'll put this on there, set it off the heat, put us some fresh coals on top, let her glaze about maybe four minutes, we'll be good to go. Say, folks, them little trouts is looking good in that Dutch oven. What I always like to do after we done glazed them and set them on there, give them another little bitty shot of this Red River Ranch seasoning right here on top. And then, guess what? I'm gonna pull one of them out of there. And me, I'm, I'm a kind of guy who likes to share in the love. Now, come on in here, Tim. Now, seeing as how you done caught this trout with your bare hands, my friend, and this, this is Tim, my good friend here at Silver Dollar City. He the best glass man in the world, but he was gracious enough to go catch us these trout. I see you've come with your own fork. Yeah, that yeah. is good. Now, I don't never like for somebody to be looking at me while I eat, but I don't mind him looking at you, you know what I mean? Yeah. So just go ahead in there and get you about anywhere you want, brother. I don't get to eat enough trout, so I yeah. don't know what they're supposed to taste like anymore, know what I mean? That's some good trout. That is some good trout. You know, the rosemary and the garlic plus the honey there sort of puts it all back together when you get a little bit of that citric from the lemon. Yeah, so, yeah. Mm. It's, it's, cut, it's cooked through real, real nice. It's yeah. white and flaky. Yes, it is. Mm. Ain't not enough here, folks, for y'all to go up for me and Tim to share. All I'm going to tell you to do is the recipe will be in the description, and it's simple as it can be. But what I will also tell you is this will work on about any fish you want to put in a Dutch oven, but it really works well with trout. Thank y'all for tuning in today. We hope you enjoyed something. Hope you learned something. Hit the subscribe button up there in the corner. Thank you, and God bless you. Is it good? Mm-hmm. Are you guys just, like, baking for TV? No. I thought about making a gross face, but then I bit into it. I'm like, I can't, I can't do a gross face. When it is cooked right, you can peel that bone out of there. It's like filleting fish, and you didn't even have to touch the knife. But that's what an old woman told me many years ago. If you can take a trout, pull him up, and everything falls off of him, that trout is cooked what they call exceptionally well. <laughs>